Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. And today we'll be looking at this beautiful clock from the 1800s. It's called an OG clock. It's made by Seth Thomas. And the reason why they call it an OG clock is because of the molding along the top and the bottom is OG molding. Usually on these clocks, it's wrapped all the way around. This right here is the top pulley. This is a weight driven clock and these pulleys keep the string from the weight to the mechanism in line so they don't get tangled up. You will often have these clocks referred to as reverse painted glass because this glass panel right here is painted on the back side. So it's painted the foreground first and then the background um, and it has the name reverse painted glass. Really a, it's a beautiful clock. We're going to get it running. Now this is the cord and the hook for the weight. There's one on each side, one's for the chime and once for the clock itself, the time mechanism. These are the weights. They're pretty hefty weights. These are about eight pound weights. This is the pendulum. And this rod up at the top, you see the flat spring there and the pendulum will go on the end of it. And we have the wind keys. To work on this clock, First, you get the weights out of it, remove the pendulum, lay it on its back. And the first thing we'll do is pull the pen holding the hands on. Now, you can tell it's an older clock. This pen, this is a little wedge pen, is, uh, is how the older clocks hold the hand on. Just unwedge the pen, that little copper disc adds springs, what so holds it on there. And then you just remove the four screws in each corner. Now this is a very thin tin plate with paint on it. And you can see in the past where somebody's tightened these screws down too much and flaked the paint off. Uh, it's pretty delicate, so always use care with the, the face of the cloth. This is the mechanism. And just by looking at it right off the bat, you can see moving the, the verge arm here. This is the verge wheel. And you can see at the end where it's gouged into the mechanism frame there because it was transported with the pendulum on it. You always want to remove the pendulum and the weights whenever you move a weight-driven clock. You, you can do a lot of damage to a clock you know, by moving it around a lot with the weights and the pendulum attached. So there are little bolts on the uh, bottom here, little, little nuts actually, and they're attached to hooks. And you can see on the bottom there, there's hooks that are in there and they do a pretty good job of holding the mechanism very stable. Now when you pull the mechanism out, you have to be careful with the cords. So gently pull them up. And this is what the mechanism looks like. We'll keep track of all the screws and everything. Now it doesn't take much to stop one of these clocks. And you could see the dirt the cobwebs, um, that would definitely stop uh, a clock from working. There's a lot of power in the lower end of these wheels at the bottom, but as the weight transfers to the top, uh, a smallest thing could stop it. So what I'm doing is putting pressure on the lower wheels here and looking at the mechanical movement and everything actually is working really well. 
uh, I want to clean this mechanism. So I'm going to pull these ropes out, these cords. And once I get the cord out, you can s isolate the movement of the wheel on either side. And you can see if there's any wear in the brass plate. Now these arbors that are poking through the plate here, you can see it moving back and forth. Those are hardened steel and the plate is brass. So the plate will wear away and the arbors won't. This movement is so minimal. I think this clock is gonna be fine with it like it is. All right, let's get this thing cleaned up. We'll put it in the ultrasonic and give it a bath. Now, if you don't have an ultrasonic, you can use naphtha and you soak it in naphtha for 10, 20 minutes and then into hot water, as hot as you can stand it, and then into mineral spirits to get rid of the water, and then a blow dryer. I know it's kind of a process, but it works. I did my first the 10, 15 clocks this way, and it has worked really well. So right out of the ultrasonic, this is still really hot to handle. Uh, then it's going to go right into hot water, as hot as I could stand it, and then into a blow dryer. And uh, not a heat gun, a blow dryer. Now if you look really carefully, you can see fingerprints. These fingerprints are very old fingerprints. Look on the left hand side there. There's a thumbprint. Um, all this discolorization is from uh, human hands touching the brass. Um, it has acids and oils in it that's just not good for it. So let's clean up the case now. I have cleaned it with that hand cleaner. It's a hand cleaner degreaser, and I'll use this uh, feed-in wax to treat it. it this, this wood was very old. There's a, this veneer is very, very dry. So immediately this stuff started to help condition the wood. Looks a lot better now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and oil the mechanism. This is a synthetic oil. You know, in the old days they used to use whale oil and, and goose fat. Um, bad combination. Our, the modern day oils are so much better. So not even a drop on each one of the arbors that's poking through, as you can see. It, too much oil is, is a lot worse than not enough oil. So just the tiniest bit of oil on each one of the arbors there. And flip it over. Now these older clocks don't have oil sinks. Newer, like from the 1920s and such, these would have oil sinks in them. And an oil sink is simply just the depression in the plate in itself that would help hold the oil around the arbor longer. So I've done a couple steps already. I filled in this gap there was a, a pretty bad chip there. I didn't fill the chip, I just painted over it. I used the, just the dabbing, like a stippling technique to uh, kind of fill it in with paint uh, and, and not anything else. And that worked out pretty good. It's a modeled uh, surface anyway, so it, it blends in really well. And I went ahead and put the cords onto the power drive onto the sprockets. You can see that they're tied on. That was actually the hardest part of this whole thing because the ends were frayed and trying to get them through were crazy hard. So I, I ended up putting just a little uh, 
of wood glue, a little bit of this on it, let it sit for about 10 minutes and it made it stiff enough so I could just push it through and it was still um, it was still soft enough I could tighten in a knot pull it nice and tight so uh, we're going to put these <clears throat> hooks these hooks right here and they have threads on the bottom down here, we have, those are the nuts that go on the, on the threads. So that will hold this tight to this board. And then we'll put this back in place on the top, in the back. And uh, we'll put the weights on and see what happens. All right, so we got it secured back into the box. I'm going to take this wire that comes with it and it's going to go right through that hoop which is the verge and this wire is what the pendulum is going to hang off of and this spring is going to go right in that slot right there and there's a little wire that keeps it hanging on there. So now the verge should push that rod and that verge will interact with the verge wheel and this will get the pendulum and now we'll put the weights on see how it runs all right so I have the weights on you can see here here pendulums on here here's a wind key Let's put that right on there and you can see the weights going up so it's working good got the weights hung. I got the mechanism secured with the two bolts from underneath. Now up here, this hole was just too big for the screw. The screw was in there, but it just spun. So a little bit of uh, wood glue, a couple of toothpicks in there, pound them in gently with the hammer. I'll let that dry, break it off, and then when I put the screw in, it'll hold really good. That's a cabinet maker's trick. This is excellent tr trick. It works all the time. Uh, so here's the pendulum. Let's see if we get any kind of tick-tock motion here. Looks like it's working pretty good. It is out of beat. <clears throat> And I will work on that. I can work on that by bending the verge arm here and by making sure it's flat and level. Um, now I'm going to put the hand on really quick here and move it to see if I can make it chime. That is called setup. And that would be a single chime. That's good. You can see right, right here, this would be the chime mark. It would chime here, here, and then they start to space themselves. So that would be two chimes there, three chimes there, and these Deep gouges or stops. Okay, so I noticed that the um, chime strike isn't hitting hitting the chime, and so I will advance it here, and I 
I bent it around to where it's a little closer. Let's see if I can make a chime again. So you hear how it's not resonating. It's more of a thud. So basically, it's too close. The arm is too close to the wire. So I'm going to back it off a little bit. You want that chime to just barely tap that wire and immediately pull back so it resonates. I'll keep trying. Okay, I finally got the chime adjusted. There you go. All right, so I got her even by stacking catalog down here underneath this side of it and got you got it level and you can hear it's running better than it was but you can still hear that pause so I'm going to bend this verge just a little bit the smallest bit a little pressure Kind of sounds weaker and worse. We'll go back out. Nope, more uneven. I think we're heading in the right direction by bending her this way. Yeah, it's starting to smooth out. So I'll keep playing with it, but you have, you want to make sure that you get it level first that is the most important thing with any kind of weight driven clock you want to get it level both plum and bob especially like cuckoo clocks very sensitive plum and bob okay i'm pretty pleased with the way that's running i put a just a, a little the tiniest drop of oil here and you want to make sure that that's pretty close. You know, you, you don't see it like swinging back and forth and hitting. It can lose a lot of energy like that. So it's just sliding along in that groove. I'll go ahead and put the face back on. Got the hands back on, the face back on. It's running nicely. And just with a few simple tools, just with a pair of pliers, a little hammer, screwdriver, that's all I use, the level. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.